On va maintenant parler de mobile. On va rester en anglais. So we're going to talk about mobile. Next speaker is the founder and CEO of Golden Gecko, which is the, mo the leading mobile app solution provider in the world with uh, more than 1,500 mobile apps and sites delivered since 2005. Uh, he's going to talk about succeeding in the mobile channel. Please help me welcome Magnus Yann. Thank you. So yes, um, so actually I'm originally a software engineer, so I've been programming since I was a child. And uh, I've been working in mobile for the last 12 years or so, so uh, over the next half an hour hopefully I'll be able to share some great insights, tips and tricks uh, from what we've done and learned over the last 10 years. So quickly about ourselves, I think our, our core business is actually creating engagement for, for brands and for our customers as well, whether it's a startup that is creating a mobile business or a brand like Unilever, Anheuser-Busch or Coca-Cola. It's all about creating engagement, engaging experience for them uh, on the mobile device. Uh, and we're about 180 people today across uh, Asia, Europe, and North America. We've, been, we've had the luxury of working with some amazing brands throughout the world, uh, like you can see here, including uh, a lot of uh, both media companies, brands, and others. And we work with most of our brands today. We work actually from the strategy concept stage Uh, doing prototyping up to user experience design, uh, testing those concepts, uh, going through development, quality assurance and testing, and then finally distribution marketing and managing it and following up on analytics. And all of these parts are equally important, obviously. So why mobile? Obviously, I don't think I need to convince you guys about this, but I'll give you some quick stats from uh, some latest work. As you can see here, most, mobile, most people look at their phone about 150 times a day, which means once every six and a half minutes. Probably half of those are Facebook and email, and then the rest of them are other things. But it's stunning. And it's important to say that mobile is not just taking a desktop site, an e-commerce site, and putting it on a mobile phone. It's so much more. It's about taking, like for example, if we talk about e-commerce, it's about taking... Uh, e-commerce as it is today, adding the camera, adding location, adding voice controls, QR codes, uh, the constant connectivity, all of these things at any time, and that's what makes uh, mobile today, and that's what makes it so powerful. And actually, also mobile is not, although I'll, I'll mention some things about the importance around mobile advertising today, but in reality, and, and actually mobile advertising today reaches Uh, so this is smartphone stats, uh, 93% of smartphone users have seen ads. They're across uh, mobile websites, apps, videos, search engines, and uh, video websites, so in a lot of different places. Uh, but advertising comes in as an important part. Now, this is probably the most important, or interesting thing. If we look today at where people spend their time, uh, it's still, so over the last couple of years, it's been around 40% has been on TV. The stunning change, however, is really in online, obviously, and mobile. Um, and if you look at most of the channels, so TV, for example, about 37.2% of our time, or consumers' time, uh, their media engagement during the day is spent on TV. I can't remember exactly how many hours it is, but maybe it's three and a half or something like that. Um, and then the equivalence of about 38.1% of budgets, media budgets in Europe and, and North America is spent on TV, so pretty much on par. It means that it looks like it's um, on online, we see it, it's, it's catching up, so it's been catching up really fast. I think just a couple of years ago, uh, time spent online was much higher than the media spent, but today it's only a couple of percent difference. So you can see 24.2%, 23.3. Radio is on, almost on par. Where it becomes stunning is when you look at mobile. So almost 20% of our media, spent, media time is spent on mobile today. Actually, in some segments, so if you look at teenagers, it's more than TV, so it would actually be more than 45% or something like that. Whereas only about 3.5% uh, of the media budgets are spent on mobile. Whereas you, it's almost exactly the same difference if we look at print. So looking at this, I wouldn't want to be uh, a print uh, magazine. So obviously it's lucky, or it's probably not lucky, but the fact that Vice went from print into uh, mobile and online is, uh, is obviously a very large part of their success. Um, 
And looking at this, we would then imagine that, okay, considering how much uh, is happening right now in mobile advertising and so on, you would imagine that mobile uh, or media, media agencies and brands were catching up. But in reality, the gap is actually increasing. So if we look here at the time spent on mobile by consumers versus the ad spend, that gap is actually increasing more and more. And the brands that are spending more uh, on mobile are getting more out of it. And what's happened particularly in 2013, a couple of interesting things, I think. Um, so there was about 120% growth in mobile media spend uh, between 2012 to 2013. Uh, a lot of that growth came from Facebook and Google, especially Facebook because uh, the, the propositions were launched this year. And such a large share of mobile users come, or such a large share of users come from mobile. And also we've seen an enormous amount of popularity around Facebook's paper download uh, program because it's very reliable. So those were a couple of things. Oops. Um, so where are, where are the users when they consume mobile services? The interest, most interesting stat is probably that actually most users are not mobile at all when they're using their mobile phone. They're actually at home. Uh, and actually a lot of them are in front of the television. And if we look downwards, yeah, so homework, uh, so yeah, you can imagine people are obviously not working much because they're spending all their time checking Facebook at work. <laughs> and the other interesting fact is that, so uh, the, here are some stats of what, where people are using, uh, or when people are using their, uh, their mobile phone with other devices. So I think while listening to music, 66%, while watching uh, TV, 43%, while using the internet, so in front of a PC, they're still using their mobile phone. So in almost every situation, people are multitasking, uh, which is also extremely interesting. And uh, actually, I think this, this stat is actually two years old. So two years ago, people said, 40% said that they would rather give up their TV than their smartphone. Today, it's probably 80%. So. so why mobile first then? So as you could see in the stats, it's still, so TV and online is still a little bit bigger than, um, uh, than mobile. Actually, if you, take, if you take desktop and mobile together, then in North America and Europe, they're slightly bigger than TV today. So why would you then start with mobile? So um, within, within a year or so, the uh, mobile will definitely dominate. If you look at Facebook today, I think there's still the majority, there's actually more users, act, more usage from mobile than there is from, um, from PCs. And the user experience is very different. So yesterday it was used to be you went to the computer, location didn't really matter. Um, you have a lot of time normally and uh, the user experience was like Amazon and other sites. You just crammed as much content as possible into a page because that was the most important thing. Whereas today it's changed completely when you were looking at an iPad or, or, um, or a smartphone. Uh, you quickly open up an app or open up the browser. Uh, where you are is extremely important because you want a different experience if you're in the store versus outside of the store versus home and so on. Uh, you usually only have a few seconds, you're waiting for someone, you're waiting for the bus, so really time is critical and less is more. It's all about getting the right things, not everything. And this actually, what a, what a lot of websites look like today, so uh, this is Heineken, Heineken's uh, US website on the left hand side on a mobile device. It's pretty scary that this can still be the case. Uh, it's nice with uh, all of that content on there, but obviously you can't navigate that on a mobile device, and I think it took 45 seconds to load. On the right-hand side is an example of a Facebook app on, <laughs> uh, on a mobile device. You can see what it looks like, all you got. And I think this was for uh, Nike or someone promoting a, f a football site or a game. If 50% of the users come from mobile devices, then that's not a great experience. And there are great ways of doing it today. So it's not all, all about apps and it's not all about mobile websites. So one really strong way today of, of reaching all devices is by uh, working with responsive, uh, responsive web design. So that's creating websites that automatically adapt for all different devices. And if you start doing that from a mobile device, then that's actually the best strategy because the mobile is probably the most challenging since, um, since it will force you to prioritize the things that are important. So it's like once again, you need to make sure that that screen is just filled with the things that you really want to get the user's attention of because if they have to scroll down f five screens, then they're not gonna see it. So 
it's really about getting the value across. And if you can get it right on, on a smartphone, then it's a lot easier to get it, uh, get it right across a tablet and then a desktop. So start with mobile. So what about apps versus web? So um, a few years ago, every, like a, lot of, um, a lot of people were saying apps are dead, um, web is the future, web apps are the future. And we said maybe. And <laughs> Uh, but actually the result has been the complete opposite. So today, I think, uh, you won't be able to see the exact stats here, but 87% 80, of time spent on mobile is actually on apps. 13% uh, is through the mobile browser. Now, if you look at, and that doesn't mean that everything should be through apps, because a lot of this, all search are pretty much uh, through the mobile browser, so if you wanna be uh, possible to find, then you still need to be on a mobile website but an enormous amount of the engagement today is through apps. And what we can see as well, and this, uh, this is a good example from the Olympics um, in the UK, so they had about 432 million visits, 109 million of those were um, was across mobile, uh, that was web and mobile. Um, out, of, out of these visits, 15, there were 15 million app downloads, so if you look at that, 15 million versus 109, it doesn't sound that high. But if we then look at the engagement, so the amount of um, time spent, it was 64% of the total time spent with the Olympics engagement or with the Olympics content was actually through the apps. So those 15 million users were a lot more active than all of the others. Uh, and another stunning fact here was that actually uh, there were more than 10 million push notifications through this period. So a lot of people are concerned that people turn off push notifications. 60% of the users click to open based on those. Now, having said that, it's obviously Olympics, so we're interested in who won the 100 meter dash and all of these things, but uh, one of the things that we're seeing is extremely high engagement through push notifications. So how do I create a great mobile solution then? Now, there are four things that we think are important here. One is, um, um, it's basically, it's a combination today of user experience, interactivity and social, performance and utility and entertainment. Probably the most important thing is getting the utility and entertainment right. If you miss out on one of these fours, four, it's actually very difficult to succeed and we see this over and over again with brands. If you look at all the most successful ones, have gotten all of these four right. Um, and you can see, it's not, it's not that easy, so these are, once again, I think this is actually one year old, the stats are now higher, so it says 21 apps installed per average uh, smartphone, I think it's about 34 now. But the thing obviously is that people don't use all of those, uh, so it's difficult to be that one, one brand that everybody's going to be using. So it's probably around 15 now. So because of this, you really need to get the use cases right. You need to understand what, is the, what are the key use cases that my users will use. And this is just an example of how you identify them through where do you get your inspiration from engagement, how do you plan, et cetera. Uh, and, it, and if you look at then the use case, this is what a typical Apple product looks like. It's push, so you, you need to get it right on a smartphone. This is what a typical Google product looks like. It's search field find. This is what most of our customers' websites look like today on mobile. That's not really gonna work, is it? So getting that use case right is extremely important. Uh, some quick rules then on, on the social engagement. Um, so the first one, and this is about like how do you integrate Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all of these things into mobile apps. One of the first things is understanding the mobile behavior uh, mobile sharing behavior outside of outside of your app. So how do people, why do people share things with their friends? How do they do it? Would they share something if it says, if it's got an advert in it, will they change, share it? Versus if it's great content like what Vice is producing for their customers, then maybe they will share it. How do you, how do you, um, what does the buttons look like and all of that? So you really need to understand that. Um, the social integration is, uh, there's enormous amount of best practice from people like uh, Anthony that have been helping uh, brands with this. So really understanding how do you use um, these things. Transparency, and this is about why, do you, why are you asking me to connect through Facebook, for example. If you just put the, the social sign-in button there and force people into connecting, then a lot of people will say, no, I'm not gonna do that. I don't wanna give away my Facebook account to you as a brand. Whereas if you tell them that if you do this, we will give you this, or 
if you do this, we will never give away this data to anyone else, but that transparency is extremely important. Uh, thinking about the creators versus the consumers is very important, so obviously, I think 20% 20, 20 of the customers are probably willing to share and create some content, whereas the rest of them, they're just consuming, and we'll see this on Instagram and other sites as well. Most people are really just consuming the media, they're not creating. And then it's about creating an ongoing conversation. So these are some of the key tips around that. So what are some great examples then of engagement apps? Uh, I think one of my favorites is uh, Nike Running Plus. Uh, they've been now running for the last four years, probably one of the most successful ones. The, the branding is quite subtle. They do present uh, the shoes in there because you can pick which shoes you're using and the Nike brand is in there. But in reality, it's a big value add for customers. It's a utility. It's social because you can run against your friends, you can share it. It's got an amazing user experience and the performance is stunning. You don't even need to be connected to a network. So if you're offline, if you're traveling somewhere and roaming and you don't want to use your internet connection, all of it is working. Another great example from one of our clients is uh, called My Dog. It's, uh, it's a network for, for dogs and their owners because dogs normally don't sign up for themselves. Uh, and once again, this, there's, actually, uh, there's actually two brands behind this, but you can't see it anywhere. So if you look at the whole experience around this, it's about the dog lovers, it's about the dogs, it's about the content. And somewhere hidden behind all of this is actually uh, some, someone that wants to sell uh, animal insurance. Uh, and that works. So once again, it's utility, it's interactive social, it's about creating a network here, the user experience is good, and the performance is good. Uh, another example is from O2, which is the biggest uh, mobile operator in, in the UK. Um, they wanted to do something differentiating to get more loyalty out of their customers, not spending uh, money on doing another advert. Instead, they created a program for their loyal customers, which gives them great offers from the favorite brands. Uh, this was launched two years ago, and it has been extremely successful. They have over 3 million active users today. Uh, and once again, this is a utility, user experience, performance. They have not actually succeeded with the social part of it because they're a bit scared of how do you do that and what do people, people think about us and so on. But it still worked. So sometimes three out of four can work. But you really need to get those four. So uh, another important thing. So one of the things that we've seen over the last six, seven years is that most of the time uh, someone thinks last minute as a part of a campaign or as a part of their uh, media budget for the year, oh, we need to create an app or we need to create a mobile website. And then that's basically it. So they throw some money on it and say, okay, we've got two months to get this done. It doesn't work. It fails over and over again if you do that. And people get disappointed. Why didn't it work? If you spend, let's say, uh, like 40% of your budget on a TV advert, you will test that. You will research it. You will go through all of these things, interviews, but for mobile people haven't. So one of the things that I would like to <laughs> advise you, the core thing here is think about mobile just the way you think about other media channels. You need to invest the same amount of rigor in your vision and strategy, in the research and the user experience and testing the launch and planning your media campaign, in measuring and maintaining it, all of these things. And I have a lot more details around this, but I don't want to go through this. But uh, it's all around focus groups, testing, the, like prototyping it, uh, involving users through every stage of the process. And it's even more important when it comes to mobile if you want to succeed, because you need to make sure that that engagement works, that the feedback is good, that you will get the right ratings in the end. Uh, and throughout the process, like prototyping, I think sometimes it can take maybe a week or three days to create a prototype. If you're going to work on a project for four months and you hope to get millions of users, then why not spend those extra three, four days on testing it first? Uh, and don't forget about uh, the media budget around it. So although you can be lucky and you can launch an app, uh, and some brands have, and it will go viral and people will just download it themselves, Apple features it or Google, most of the time it doesn't work. And just in the same way that Vice said before that in the, um, in the content space, you need to put some money into the paid media. And you also need to use your existing channels. So um, think small, not big necessarily. Uh, look at all the channels that you have, everything from PR, Twitter, Facebook, Google, uh, TV ads, um, uh, above the line marketing. See how you can use all of those to get the message across for mobile as well. 
and then measure, measure, measure. Uh, one of the most amazing things about mobile is that you get so much data. You know where the customer is. You know where they, how they're using it. You know when they're using it. All of these things, and that's what's going to help you create the future uh, amazing apps as well, or mobile apps. Uh, and there's a lot, and I think one of the interesting stats here as well is don't just think about downloads. The important thing is not the number of downloads you get, whether it's 10,000, 100,000, a million. It's how many users do you have the next month and the next month and the next month. How, how often do they come back? How often do they engage with you? How long do they engage with you? All of those things are a lot more important. And in the end, you want transactions. You want to see how many people walked into your store, how many people went online, how many people booked. So what is the transaction? And that's the power that you can get from this. It's not only about downloads. So let's summarize it then. I know I've been going fast, so I'll give you a quick wrap up. So as you can see, mobile is already bigger than print and radio, and it will very soon surpass uh, the desktop web in time spent, um, but it's still very far behind on media spend. So if you catch up sooner than your competitors, if you look at the leaders today, then you've got a chance to differentiate. Uh, Make sure that mobile is a core part of your media plan and budget, uh, because for a lot of brands it's not. It's just part of digital, and then, so let's say that digital is 20%, and then mobile becomes 10% of uh, the 20%, so that's 2%, and that's just wrong. Apps versus web, apps are definitely not for everyone. Uh, so creating engaging apps, it's difficult, and as you can see, there's a lot of competition. If people only use uh, 15 apps a month, then being one of those 15s is not easy. Uh, but, it's, but if you can succeed in it, then it can be extremely successful. Uh, great solutions need, you need great content, utility, entertaining, and great use cases. Um, and you need to promote the content. So once again, make sure that the promoted media is part of the plan. And finally, measure, 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 and use that data to get better. And that's it. It's an interesting mix of cities you have. So London, New York, Stockholm, Berlin, Barcelona, Phnom Penh. Yes. So where are the developers? Uh, so we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have developers today. Actually, we have India. So. Um, Barcelona, Phnom Penh, and uh, London we have developers. Actually, in New York as well. So we have developers across all, all of these. But it's slightly cheaper today in Spain and uh, in Cambodia. So a lot of our customers go for that. <laughs> I guess. Est-ce qu'on a des questions? Do we have any questions on mobile? Dites-moi la question, je la répète. So in case of the topic of this event, they feel that mobile is their way that they can communicate with the consumer, and then they can use different channels, different media at the same time, like listen to the music, like watch TV, to engage the consumer. And then on the other hand, you underline to the mobile that so would you say in the final effect that uh, mobile is a way to acquire more consumers or is it a way to increase the AI future? So is mobile a way to acquire more consumers or is a mobile a way to create more loyalty to your brands? Uh, both. <laughs> but but if, you, okay, if you take, for example, uh, as I said before, the most, the most successful uh, mobile advertising program this or la launched last year was probably uh, paid per download by Facebook. And that's an acquisition program. That's all about getting new customers onto uh, your mobile app. So that works extremely well. But, but I would say in the end, the purpose of doing that is getting, engage is getting engagement through the mobile channel. So you can do that through any, anyone. It can be through a TV advert that uses Chesam where you have uh, audio recognition that then sends you or gives you the download link to an app or to a mobile website. But in the end, it's all about creating engagement uh, through the mobile. It's the acquisition part uh, is it's just part of getting to the engagement. I believe, at least. Any more questions? Est-ce qu'on a d'autres questions? So these are the questions just before the coffee break. Mm -hmm. So everybody's like, if I have a question, I have to wait <laughs> five, four minutes for my coffee. <laughs> so it's really hard. Anyway, I'll take that on me. A um, couple of questions. Um, when, when you want to launch um, a mobile app these days, uh, you develop for Android, you develop for iOS. What about Windows Phone and this Canadian company that 
you know, <laughs> used to be cool a few years ago. What's your recommendation in terms of platform? Um, so I'd say, yeah, uh, iOS and Android actually makes up probably more than 90% of the usage for apps today. So those are definitely the primary for, uh, for most brands. And then mobile web, because you need a mobile website for, uh, for sure anyway, can cover the rest. For if you're a big brand um, and you have a lot of users, then it, it makes sense to cover all of them. So if you take booking.com that is huge and travel, then they have a Windows phone app and they have a BlackBerry app. Um, I don't think, so Windows is definitely growing. Microsoft is actually doing a very good job now and differentiating that and they will continue to grow. Uh, BlackBerry is not disappearing, contrary to what most people believe. I think they will stay in the enterprise space. And I actually spoke to a client yesterday who asked, so what do we do about all of these BlackBerry users? We don't like them because they're difficult to serve, but they're there and actually companies and like take London, the financial institution and government institutions, they love BlackBerry. It's secure and it works, so they're going to stay with it. So if you want to reach out to those customers, then you need to reach that platform as well, but it's fine with a mobile, app, mobile web experiences. So before you choose the platform you want to go on, you're going to kind of assess a bit where your audience is and then you're going to follow them. And if it's a lot of business people, then maybe BlackBerry has to be in the mix. Yeah. There's also this difference between iOS and Android in terms of people spending. Mm -hmm. uh, typically, you showed the stats earlier, not for all the tablets, but only for the iPad. And the iPad has a very specific usage pattern, especially when it comes to commerce. Like People spend much more. So for example, in the last um, Cyber Monday, Amazon said we had more people buying from Android, but the average um, um, checkout was less than on iOS. Can you tell us a bit about that, the differences? Yeah, so systems? one of them is natural. It's that uh, Android devices are actually cheaper than iOS devices, which means that people that buy iPhones have more money, or people that might buy iPads, so therefore they can spend more money. That's probably the, the main reason that we see different conversion rates. There, but there is also another answer, which is that, uh, I believe at least, the user experience is still better than on Apple products. Google is getting there with Android, but they're still not there yet. And I think, but I think it's basically the, the number one reason is buying power. So people that buy iPads have more money, and therefore they buy more. Switzerland has a lot of iPads <laughs> because uh, you know people can afford them. Um, you, you mentioned advertising, and um, yes, mobile advertising works, and we know it since you know six months. The Google share price actually went up uh, like six months ago when they posted these new results. What are the advertising formats that work on mobiles? Um, so today, I think uh, it's still, it is, so search is actually number one now, um, primarily through Google, so paid search. So the uh, usual Google ads, you yeah. make a search and then, okay, that's exactly. one format. And then, uh, yeah, then I think we see it, it's display ads after that, so it's different types of banners, interstitials, and so on, and you'll see that, uh, the, especially on media sites today, they're getting bigger, they're normally getting more interactive, they're turning around, twisting, and so on. Um, so it's starting to look more like desktop, and then on, if you look at social in social media, a lot of it is sponsored advertising. So it's it's content that is sponsored. So it's it, the idea with the idea being that it shouldn't feel like we're pushing advertising, we're just sponsoring great content for you. In reality, obviously, that is advertising. But those are the top three categories that we see. Okay. And videos are coming, but it's still fairly small on on mobile in terms. One last question I got uh, right now through Facebook, but will you make your slides available online so that people can download them? I think a lot of them. Yes, we're happy to do that. Okay, Matt, can we find your slides online? Yes, so Matt will also put his slides online. Okay, thank you very much. Big round of applause for Magnus. Thank you.